Hello, good day. I'm Tariq Fatah and as usual, when I come on television, I have some news about the Muslim community or what's happening to it or issues about Islam and how we understand it. Lately, the issue of Muslims, the treatment in the West, the treatment with each other has been in the news, especially the one where a 20-year-old ran a truck over a family of four and killed them. And since then, a whole lot of us have been, it seems, trying to enjoy the limelight we have got. Everyone seems to be bending over backward to accommodate us. But there's one news that hit us right in the middle of this controversy, that everyone seems to have ducked and avoided discussing it. I'm talking about an interview given by the Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman or MBS as we call him, uh, where he declared in Saudi Arabia on an Arabic language network that the hadith that most Muslims quote and uh, form the basis of their Islamic Sharia, which is what supposedly Prophet Muhammad uh, said to his followers and which is separate from what the Quran says. And Prince Muhammad bin Salman had the audacity to say that these writings that were written down over 280 years after the death of Prophet Muhammad are not authentic. According to him, the Hadith or Sahih Bukhari or Sahih Muslim, all of them uh, represent the writer's own um, prejudices or own opinions and thus he would not act on any of them uh, until and unless it was a Hadith Mutawatir which means which had a straight line right from uh, the passing away of a prophet to the time when it was written when there was a continuous chain and there are very few of them that are there. If anybody else had said that, can you imagine if the uh, president of France had said that, what would have happened? If uh, President Trump would have said that, oh, the whole world would have shaken up. But no, the significance is that Crown Prince MBS, Mohammed bin Salman, is also the designated guardian of Islam's two holy places, which is Mecca and Medina. And he is the in charge of the Harman Sharifan, as we say. And his word counts. It has never happened during a long history where any Islamic ruler, caliph, king, or president or dictator has had the uh, courage to raise this issue, though a whole lot of other people during Islam's history have raised this issue and some have even the Mutazalites called even the Quran whether it was the written word or the revealed word and um, they had a very sad ending and, and you know obviously necks get cut off when something like this happens. We also have the issue of Mansur al-Khalaj who kept saying I am the truth and which was interpreted as having said I am God and he denounced a whole lot of teachings of the Sharia that emanate from Hadith literature which MBS has denounced. This has significant meaning. Most of the Muslims, especially of the Indian subcontinent, take their origin either from the Turks as slaves of the Turks that invaded and plundered India or from the Umayyads who landed in Sindh in the year 711 and then uh, you know eliminated and uh, plundered uh, Raja Dahir or Memul Ghaznavi who came from Afghanistan and established Islam and some who came to the southern coast who are called and mentioned as monsoon Muslims. All of them adhered to laws that would have no standing 
in the Hadith literature was not there. For example, there is no Quranic reference to cover a woman's head. Many of you might not know that. The Quran simply says, hide your places of shame, which is instruction to Arabs, uh, Arab women who uh, when the men folk went out to war, they would lift up their breasts and jiggle them. And so the Quran said, cover them up. This has now transferred into uh, something taken from a Hadith literature and then enforced on as the Muslim Brotherhood's flag. And you can see them in Toronto or Western world, anywhere that you go, the flag of the Muslim Brotherhood is always there to, be, uh, to identify women as that. So if Prince Mohammed bin Salman was not Prince, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, would he have met the fate of what Salman Rushdie did? Or the many people uh, who have written about this and have been killed? I know of at least one uh, Egyptian uh, scholar who in the United States wrote about this and he was murdered. Will someone go and now extend his hand and try to assassinate the Saudi crown prince? I doubt it very much because unfortunately uh, we Muslims have become uh, the slaves of our own cowardice and courage together. So whereas we are willing to uh, take on and uh, fight on issues that we claim to be very close to us, when it comes from someone in authority, we back out because we're not going to stand up to MBS and say, hey, you said something wrong. No, he's the king. He's the crown prince. We can only say that to our servant. We can only say that to somebody who's poor or someone who's Christian or Hindu or a Jew. Then we will demand that his head be chopped off. Something to think about and something to read about pick up Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman's interview and pay attention to the man who is literally single-handedly changing the very face of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, hopefully for the better. Thank you.